A group of 35 civilians from the Falkland Islands, including the Chief Secretary, the number two in the British administration, arrived by plane in Uruguay today. They left the Falklands voluntarily and are tonight on their way to London. The group includes 15 children and four Canadians. Tim, you had asked the Chief Secretary, Mr Dick Baker, about the morale of the Argentine troops who are occupying the islands. Some Falkland Islanders have left voluntarily, but Lieutenant Colonel Lamb and his family had no choice. As Chief of Police in Port Stanley, he was deported at 48 hours' notice, leaving behind 17 tea chests of possessions, a new car, and Conrad III, the family dachshund, but bringing with them the last Union Jack on the islands. Since the invasion, he says, the islanders have remained in a state of confusion. From the islanders' point of view, it's been one of bewilderment, but uh, contained anger. What was, it, what was it like from your point of view, uh, going through the, the invasion by the Argentines? It didn't really affect me very much, because we just you just heard shots and you were told it was going on, but and you saw soldiers, but apart from that... How would you sum up your feelings about uh, what has happened in the last two or three weeks? Anger. Impatience. Against whom? Uh, who are against the Argentinians or raping our tiny virtually defenseless colony and uh, I'm impatient to be back and get on with the job and start the reconstruction. Things will change in many respects. Of course the old ways are not likely to come back in Toto. And that's a matter for other people to address themselves to and no doubt that's already being done in London. Nanni Mara e Gallinari Prospero, ci sono sempre Lombardi, Di Giovanni e Pesari. Allora, diamo atto della venuta Costituzione di parte civile. Della Presidenza del Consiglio dei Ministri, aspetta, mi dia, faccia dare atto di questo, poi veniamo a vedere. Della Presidenza del Consiglio, avvocato per cortesia. Avvocatura dello Stato. Per la Guardia di Pubblica Sicurezza Rai Nonni Giuseppe. Una questione è stata posta sotto il profilo della praticamente che alcuno degli imputati sia stato tradotto dal carcere di origine in una. Presidente dispone l'allontanamento. Policemen have been searching UDA headquarters since dawn. One said if necessary, they'll take the place apart. So far, they found a large amount of ammunition and pieces of buried guns. And Itiri, Supreme Commander for nearly 10 years, was picked up at his home. And so was John McMichael, a member of the UDA's inner council, usually their spokesman. As the search went on, an army guard arrived. The UDA, which claims 15,000 members, believes in a settlement here based on an independent Ulster. It's not an illegal organization, though it's often accused of sheltering loyalist terrorist groups.
This was the third emergency debate on the crisis within 12 days. In both houses, MPs and peers had been recalled from their Easter holidays to hear the latest developments following the shuttle diplomacy of the American Secretary of State. The Defence Secretary, Mr Knott, who was involved in negotiations with Mr Haig, was one of the ministers attending this morning's Cabinet meeting in Downing Street. The Foreign Secretary, Mr Pym, was also there to brief Cabinet colleagues on the talks. There was also a discussion about the tactics to be followed during this afternoon's debate. They beat the drum of war when they took to the streets of the small town of Trelew in Patagonia. It looked as if the town had caught a contagious bout of war fever, but it was not quite as menacing as it seemed. The demonstration was more of a belated celebration of Argentina's invasion of the Falkland Islands than a display of war lust. Despite a battered economy and an unpopular military regime, the man in the street can hold his head high again now that his country controls the islands they've coveted for so long. One banner called on Argentina and the local Welsh community to push out the English. Argentina has not been to war for more than a century, and most people don't want one now. But they won't have peace at any price, so they're preparing for war. The main road from the capital to Commodoro Rivadavia, the mainland staging post to the islands, is busy with convoys of trucks, carrying supplies such as military landing craft and snow plows. At the military headquarters, officers of the battalion which captured the islands give daily briefings. They provide very little information, but they seem confident about the way things are going. And with a general as president, they probably don't have to worry about politicians selling them down the river. For Argentine soldiers, a clash with Britain over the Falklands would be something like a holy war, because the issue is so deeply engraved in the national conscience. Ever since Britain removed the Argentine garrison from the Falklands in 1833, generations of Argentines have grown up with the idea that one day the islands will be theirs again. Now that the military has realized that dream, it will be very difficult to prize them off the islands. The stakes are very high. But if time is running out, we must, we must think about it, surely, if the country well, is about to Well, of course, we're thinking about it. The task force has set sail. It's on its way to the South Atlantic. It's having its own pressures.